When you see someone, what's the first muscle group that you look at that shows physical strength and physical dominance? Is it the legs? Is it the shoulders? Is it the chest? Or is it the arms? Now, if you picked arms, you just may be right. When you see anybody trying to show physical strength or dominance, the first pose that they take is the biceps pose or the double biceps pose. You basically see it in any sport. You'll see people in marathons when they cross the finish line and marathoning is a leg dominant event. You'll see them show strength that they did well by doing a double biceps pose or a single biceps pose. You'll rarely ever see someone cross the line and flex the leg, right? Now, if you wanna become that guy or that girl who people come up to and say, wow, what do you do for your arms? I'm gonna show you two of the muscle groups that are the primary focus of building great arms. Now I'm guessing if you're pretty smart that you figured out by now that the two major muscle groups involved in getting bigger arms are of course biceps and triceps. But how do you get your arms to look great in a shirt? And of course, without a shirt. Today I'm gonna to go over some of the common mistakes that people make when doing biceps and triceps exercises. We'll go over them and then I'll correct them and I'll show you the best way and the most effective way to get them done. Now if you want your arms to look good in a shirt, the shirt has to be cut right. You've gotta have it in just the right spot to show off all of your hard work. I just put up a short. It was about building bigger biceps and wearing a polo shirt. I didn't plan on wearing the polo shirt, but the post blew up. And it was a perfect example of wearing something nice and having your arms look spectacular in it. Now, a lot of you asked me, what shirt was I wearing? And conveniently, it was a barbell apparel shirt. This is my favorite of all the barbell apparel that I own. And you can see, and I talked about this before, the way that the shirt is cut, right on top of the biceps, perfect. Makes the arms look big. Again, I said you have to have big triceps and big biceps. They don't have to be gigantic because you don't want to look ridiculous in public. Maybe some of you do. I don't. I like to look athletic and fit, but not gigantic. You got to have biceps and triceps to fill out the shirt. This, for me, again, is a polo shirt that I wear out to dinner and that I was able to actually wear in the gym. And it looked good and it felt good and it performed up to my standards. If you want to check out the shirts, I've got them linked in the description. Now, enough talk about clothes, let's get to the workout. Now the first exercise I'm going to show you is very, very simple and I love to keep things simple. Simple works. Now you may see other people doing all sorts of wild and crazy exercises to build the biceps, but in reality, the simple exercises work the best. I like to do unilateral biceps curls. For me, I'm able to concentrate on each arm independently as opposed to doing it bilaterally and that's just doing both at the same time. Personal preference, again, I just prefer to do it this way because I'm able to isolate it better and to concentrate on it a little more. Now, if you wanna maximize your biceps gains, you have to make sure that you do the exercise properly. Now, there are a few mistakes I see people making with biceps curls that need to be corrected before you even start. Number one, using weight that's way too heavy for the biceps to handle. You'll see guys go over to the dumbbell rack all the time and pick the heaviest weight that they possibly can, fluff out their feathers, and then perform the exercise miserably, where every other muscle group performs the exercise instead of the biceps. Number two, improper elbow position. Number three, using unnecessary momentum. And number four, lacking control throughout the entire range of motion. Now, when choosing the correct weight for a biceps curl, you wanna make sure that you're challenged. So I'm gonna take 40 pounds, and I'm gonna start with that. Now, 40 pounds is a pretty challenging weight for me to use during a biceps curl. So I have to make sure that I can control the weight properly and maximize the contraction. So if you notice, when I start my biceps curls, I don't have my elbows way back here. I see people try to curl in here, and essentially what you're doing is you're shortening the range of motion. If my elbow's way back here, I've got a much shorter range to lift and less tension on my biceps. When I bring my elbows forward, I now start to increase tension on the biceps my shoulder is less involved, and you'll see I can take this slowly and squeeze it up. So there's a big, big contraction and bring it all the way back down with control. Again, back here, I can lift this a lot easier and a lot faster with a lot less control, and my results will probably not be what I expected. So to maximize the contraction at the biceps and to make this most effective, I take my elbows forward, I have them slightly forward of the body, my shoulders are back, both palms are facing forward, I'm gonna start with the unilateral curl. Again, I've got my arm tucked nice and tight against my body, so I've got leverage, and that'll help me create more tension. Controlling the weight all the way up and all the way down. Now, I talked about unnecessary momentum before. 
If you get to a point and the exercise becomes far too difficult, you can start with a little momentum as long as you then decelerate, slow it down, and increase contraction. The second exercise I'm gonna show you that helps me build arms big enough to fill out this shirt is the biceps hammer curl. Now, whereas the standard curl, if you take a look at the biceps, the standard curl, the wrists are in a neutral position, palms facing forward. And you can see what the peak looks like on the biceps. When I take my wrist and I pronate, you'll see what happens to the biceps in that position as well. So, supinating, turning the wrist out, biceps peak, and then you'll see what happens to the biceps in this position, it completely changes. Now, you have emphasis on the radialis and the brachioradialis, and those are the muscles that make the forearm look big. It also adds to the size of the arm overall. So again, these muscles work when you are in a hammer curl position, pronated wrist. So for max efficiency, not only time saving, but also for creating more tension on the biceps, I like to superset the unilateral curl with the hammer curl. So I go back to back, exhausting with a slightly heavier weight for the first set of the biceps curls, and then a slightly lighter weight, elbows positioned even further forward for the hammer curl. I like to take the dumbbell, rest the head of the dumbbell on my thighs so my elbow is slightly forward of my body, I have my triceps bridged and locked against my lats, and that helps to create tension and power and strength as I lift the weight. So from that position, there's very little chance that you can use momentum unless you were to bend your knees, pop your hips back, and throw the weight up. It also helps to take the shoulder out of the exercise. If the elbow is further back, I've got more chance of lifting my shoulder as I perform the biceps curl, as I flex the elbow, less chance of getting my shoulder involved when I have my arm fully extended with the elbow forward and the dumbbell resting on my thigh. Now that we've got the biceps pumped and primed, on to the second key component to filling out the sleeves on your shirt. Okay, the triceps extension. Now, there are a number of different attachments that you can use for the triceps extension. Pick your poison, whatever you want. You've got W bar, you've got handles, you've got ropes. Today, I'm gonna show you the rope. Again, pick your poison, choose any handle you want. They all work the triceps just at slightly different angles. Now again, with triceps, just like biceps, I see a few common mistakes that people make. Number one is in the elbow position. They have the elbows too far back so that when they actually perform the extension or the press down, their hands hit their waist or their thighs before they get to full extension. So key with this, getting the elbows slightly forward of the body so that your hands and your forearms from the elbow down to the wrist have a nice clear path to make all the way down. Number two, choosing a weight that's too heavy. Just like the biceps, if you choose a weight that's too heavy for your triceps to handle, every other muscle group will engage to try to do the work that the triceps should be doing. Yes, you will get work done, but you won't get the isolation that you want and the growth in your triceps, which is where you want it. Number three, momentum. People using too much momentum with this exercise rather than concentrating on the actual contraction and isolation at the triceps. Now, there are a lot of different ways to do a triceps extension. I am gonna show you how I do them. You may see people do them differently elsewhere. Again, this is how I do them. Personal preference with some of the intricacies of the actual extension. So I start this position with my lats locked in place. So I put a little bit of weight on my lats and that locks my shoulder into position so that I don't have a lot of momentum and movement here. So I lock my lats in place, chest high. I get my abdominals engaged first so you can see my abs are tight, right? So again, we can get abdominal work at the same time we get triceps work. So with about slightly less than shoulder width foot position, chest high, I extend my elbows down and pretty much using a lot of pinky pressure at the bottom, press down and extend. You'll see some people turn this all the way out. That's fine. I've also seen that cause injuries at the elbow. Use whatever range of motion that you are comfortable with. So with regular form, I can squeeze all the way down, right back up with good control, extend all the way back down. I wanna to try to make sure I don't roll my shoulders. So rolling the shoulders is not gonna be a good thing. Keep them in the same spot. Lock the abs in place and pretend like you just wanna press a ball underwater and hold it down. So maximize the contraction at the triceps. Visualize, think about what you want your arms to look like. Again, the triceps 
three heads, biceps, two heads. We're gonna get a little bit more bang for our buck size-wise with the triceps. So make sure you work on them extra hard. Now one of my secrets to growing and sculpting triceps, again, supersetting. I like to fatigue my triceps using any type of triceps press down or triceps extension, and then go straight into a calisthenics exercise, a body weight exercise that involves abdominals. If you have great arms and you don't have great abs, the whole puzzle doesn't look right. And we talked about big arms filling out shirts. If your big arms fill out your shirt and then you take your shirt off and you're a bunch of silly putty, that doesn't work either. So again, pick your poison, but a well-rounded physique is a great physique. All right, let's go. All the triceps are fatigued. Let's get the most out of it. Okay, this is a great compound exercise, body weight exercise for crushing your triceps and your abs at the same time. It is important, again, let's get that physique well-rounded. With this exercise, we want a hand position that allows us to get a nice close grip push-up. Now, my elbows don't have to be tucked all the way into my body because that doesn't work well either. So they're slightly fanned out and I extend up through the triceps. So my hands are close enough where my chest doesn't contract as hard and my triceps do the majority of the work. Now, here's the compound portion. We step forward with one arm. This is where I get a ton of abs. Step forward with the other arm. And then I go into a forearm plank press up. So I press up. There's my abdominal and triceps. Back to triceps and abdominals, triceps and abdominals right back into my close grip press. I use my thumbs as a guide, so when my thumbs hit my pecs, I know I'm in the right spot, and I accelerate and explode up. Step out, step out, forearm plank, press up, step, step, keeping the hips square, don't move the hips. If you want better abdominals, drop down into the close grip push-up, press, and then if you want, alternate with the other arm first, and back into position. So most people lose effectiveness on this exercise for a few reasons. One, fanning the elbows all the way out. That puts excess stress on the shoulders, which you don't need, and takes tension off of the triceps. So make sure you keep the elbows in the right position. And then when you take your step forward, one of the bigger mistakes as I step forward is breaking form with my hips. So tilting down like this, I've just taken a ton of tension off of my abdominals. I've set it into the internal oblique, which is fine but I'm looking to work my main abdominal wall. So I wanna make sure I keep my hips square when I take my first step and square when I take my second step. The other mistake, dropping down too fast and too hard. So when you, when you drop down into your plank press up, we come down slowly, gently touch the floor, and then we can accelerate up from that position. Again, don't let the hips break form. Get a pelvic tilt in if you start to feel it in your lower back step with a stiff arm and again here is where my hips can pop up i want to keep them square square hips abdominals are locked and engaged and then drop back down and accelerate so now you got four exercises that'll help you build your arms to look good with a shirt and without a shirt i know a lot of you are wondering what's the rep count how many sets do i do how many reps do i do with the biceps curls with the unilateral biceps curl i like to do alternating 20 reps, so that's 10 reps on each side with as heavy a weight as I can handle, and then I superset immediately into a weight that's either five to 10 pounds lighter than what I just used, and then I will burn that out. My goal in my head is eight reps on each side, so 16 total reps of alternating hammer curls. So do that, and then you'll rest probably a minute and a half to two minutes, let your arms recover, and try to run that three to five times. If you're an expert, you'll probably be able to run it five times, if you gas yourself, which I do quite often, you might be able to accomplish it in three sets. So you may be in and out pretty quickly, arms should be pumped up, and you'll be ready to go. Now with the triceps, somewhat similar, I just like to get a slightly higher rep count for the triceps extensions on the cable. So I typically like to shoot for a minimum of 12 reps, and hopefully I'll make it to 15. As soon as I get done with those reps, I get right down to the floor, you'll save space, you'll get right into that calisthenics body weight combo, you'll do that typically five to 10 rounds, or until your abs give way or your triceps give way. Usually the abs give first, sometimes the triceps do, but I do want you to make sure that you are aware of your shoulders, make sure you don't have any aches and pains in your shoulders when you do it, and if you do it right, your triceps will work with your biceps, 
you'll fill out those shirts and you'll look great, like I said, with a shirt or without a shirt. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and I will see you all next week. Let's go.